Create a new clean project or use your existing VR project. Next, click the import button. If this is your first time using the asset, we recommend downloading everything, including the demo scene. After the import is complete, look at your console. If you see errors relating to OVR input, then your project was not previously set up for Oculus VR. You must download the OVR utilities from Oculus. A link is in the description below. Download the package and double click to import the OVR utilities. If the package imports correctly, the errors will clear. Open the bare bones scene. These are the movement scripts. In this scene, we've used the movement script twice, one for each hand. Let's view the inspector. The movement script is split into different sections. Controller settings, movement modes, general settings, and specific settings for teleportation, fade, and acceleration. At the bottom are the hookups. This is where you will assign the character controller, camera, and other game objects that are specific to the current scene. Now, let's create a new scene and set this up from scratch. Delete the main camera from the scene. Add a cube and let's scale this into a floor. Now go into the OVR folder, then the prefabs folder, and drag the OVR camera rig into your current scene. Make sure that your new rig is above the floor that we just created. Open the VR Movement Core Touch folder. Drag the two touch controller models into the scene. Take the left one and parent it to the left hand anchor. Be sure to reset it so that the position and rotation is set to 0, 0, 0. Repeat this with the right controller. Next go to File, Build Settings, Player settings to ensure that virtuality is supported is checked. Also make sure that virtuality SDK contains Oculus. Now test your scene to make sure that you can see the controllers and that they move. Next, apply the character controller to the camera rig. Scale it down to a size that will work for your project. Now let's create some cubes. This will provide us a frame of reference for your movement and speed. Now we're going to create the movement controller prefab. Create an empty game object. I am naming mine VR Movement Left. Add the VR Touch Move script to this game object. Now let's set up the controller settings. Select the left controller prefab that we just created and in the inspector, set it to the left touch. 
select the primary hand trigger, which is Oxo's terminology for the button which is near your middle finger. Leave the movement mode to flight for this example. Change the rotation mode to quick stick. This will rotate you 45 degrees if you tap the stick to the left or the right. Next, let's hook up the game objects. Drag your OVR camera rig to your rig in the inspector. Drag the center eye anchor to your head rig. The selected controller needs to be set to the left hand anchor because this is the left hand. Make sure your move speed is greater than zero. Let's try it out. Because you've selected the hand trigger as the forward button, holding down that button will engage flight. Flight works by moving you in the direction that you are moving the controller in 360 degrees. At runtime, you can adjust the speed. Note this won't save during runtime. Once you find the right speed, adjust it in the inspector. Test out the quick stick rotation. It might seem a bit jerky to you. This is because you have not set up the fade system. Let's fix that now. Go to the center eye camera and add the VR fade script. Drag the center eye camera under the fade settings in my fade. While you're there, check fade rotate to enable faded rotation. You can adjust the fade time and change the rotate time in general settings to zero. This will make the rotation instantaneous. If you do not set this to zero, you will be rotating while you're fading. This may not be desirable. Now let's test the fade. Now that you have the basic setup, you can configure it for your game or application. We have a keyboard mode for those working with other team members who do not have touch controllers. This also provides you a quick way to debug your game. With keyboard configured, you can then use WASD in place of your touch controller. Q and E will rotate you regardless of the rotation mode. Let's get back to the flight configuration. First, add a visual component to your tracking space so that you can see the rig more clearly. This golden ball is the visual representation of where the camera rig is in 3D space. Any game object colliders that are attached to the camera rig will cause the character controller to function incorrectly. It will think your character controller is inside a solid object and it will repel it from that object. Make sure that you either remove the colliders or set the object to use triggers. Now let's make the controls work on the right controller. Duplicate the VR movement left game object and rename it to the VR movement right. Select the VR movement right game object and change the configuration. Drag the right hand anchor to the selected controller hookup. Next, set my controller from the left touch to the right touch. Let's test it. Both hands should now allow you to move independently. 
Pressing the button on both hands at the same time will combine your movement. You'll move faster and in the combined direction of your controllers. Let's try out grounded movement. Select grounded movement for both controllers. If you are using the movement system with both hands, it's important that both movement systems match. When you press play, you will fall to the ground because you're grounded. You may also notice that you are way too short. Let's fix that. I'm going to adjust the size of the character visual because this is a bit too big for this scene. Select the OVR camera rig and adjust the character controller's height and position. Let's test the height change. Thank you for watching.